Do you want to learn how to write comics? Well, in this tutorial series, I'm going to show you how to write your very own Batman fan fiction. Here's a sneak peek of our basic concept. Batman and Robin are once again tied up, ensnared in the clutches of the Joker, who seeks to interrogate them. But the Joker knows the only way to get Batman to talk is by making Robin suffer. If that idea sounds compelling, then I'm going to teach you how to develop it into a six-page comic book script. Before we begin, my name is Angelo, and I've been a professional computer animator since 2009. But recently, I wrote a 22-page comic book script about Blackbeard the Pirate, who, legend has it, buried his treasure just two blocks down the street from me. If you'd like to learn more, you can visit blackbeardcomic.com. Alrighty, let's begin with step one, conduct research. Now, the nature of fan fiction is that you really don't need to do research because you're already familiar with the characters. However, I do recommend you conduct some research because you might learn something helpful. For example, did you know that Batman was directly inspired by a famous character called The Shadow? It's true. The Shadow was the star of a famous 1930s radio show. By night, the Shadow would solve mysteries and terrify criminals. But by day, he was a billionaire playboy. Does that sound familiar? Knowing what I know now about Batman made me feel better when it came to Step 2. Brainstorm a beginning slash premise. The easiest way to come up with a premise is by giving your character a problem to solve. At first, I wasn't sure what problem to give Batman. Should he stop a crime from being committed, such as a bank robbery? Should he go into detective mode and solve a mystery? I'll admit, before I did research on The Shadow, I had some momentary writer's block because I felt like I had to be original and write something that Batman's never done before. But then I remembered, oh yeah, Batman himself isn't an original concept. So I figured, instead of pressuring myself to try to be original, why not just put Batman in a situation we've all seen before and get him out of it my way? So that's what I did. I decided that Batman and Robin would be once again tied up and snared in the clutches of the Joker. So now we have a very basic problem for Batman to solve. So how is he going to get out of this one? Obviously, the first possible escape route is by giving the Joker what he wants. So what does the Joker want from Batman? This brings us to step three. Identify character motivations. Generally speaking, what exactly motivates the Joker? The Joker is motivated by the desire to commit acts of terror. So I figured what would be a more obvious act of terror than blowing up something, say, the Gotham City Bridge? So now we have a basic goal for the Joker blow up the bridge. But what does he want from Batman? Well, what if Batman stole Joker's explosives? Now we have a clear interrogation scenario. Joker has tied up Batman in order to find out what became of his explosives. So what's the Batman's motivation? Obviously, Batman's goal is to prevent the Joker from harming innocent people. So you'll notice that Batman and Joker have opposing goals. When this happens, we call it conflict. And conflict is what your high school English teacher said makes for a good story. So now that we have our basic premise and character motivations, let's move on to step four. Brainstorm the climax slash ending. So let's fast forward a bit in our story. After the Joker does some poking and prodding, to say the least, he gets Batman to admit where the explosives are. So what should happen at the end? I decided that the story should end with Batman and Robin being saved by the SWAT team. Why? Because if the dynamic duo perishes, then obviously we can't reuse them for another fan fiction story. So we have our beginning and our ending. At the beginning, Batman and Robin are tied up, and at the end, they're saved. So what about the middle of the story? More importantly, how do we make the middle compelling? The answer is step five. Turn up the tension. So let's rewind a little bit. The Joker gets Batman to admit what became of the explosives. It's with Commissioner Gordon on its way to an undisclosed police warehouse. So now 
what does the Joker do? How about he gets Gordon on the phone and orders Batman to convince him to bring back the explosives. But instead, the ever-resistant Batman tells Gordon to do the exact opposite, thus enraging the Joker. So now that the Joker is angry at Batman, what should he do? How about the Joker orders Harley Quinn to chop off Robin's head with an axe? Gruesome, I know, but the Joker is evil after all. Now we have some serious tension. But can we dial it up a little more? So imagine this. There's Harley raising the axe into the air. But just before the axe head comes down, the Joker stops her. Why? Because Joker realizes he could still get Batman to tell him the exact address the explosives are headed to. But the evil Joker knows that the only way to get Batman to talk is if Robin suffers. What should the Joker do to Robin? There's a number of ways he could torture the boy. But what if the Joker puts a hangman's noose around his neck and makes him dangle up in the air for a while? As Batman watches Robin struggle, he obviously can't take it anymore. Thus, he gives up the exact address where the explosives are headed. Now that's a lot of tension. But we could turn up the tension even more, believe it or not. So, how about this? Instead of the Joker cutting down Robin, he simply leaves Robin hanging there and exits the building with his accomplices to go chase after the explosives. All that poor Batman can do is watch his adoptive son writhe in strangulation. But suddenly, Batman hears a loud crash, followed by the words, Gotham SWAT team, everybody freeze! And so Robin is saved, just in the nick of time. As an added bonus, to keep the tension going, I thought it would be cool if Batman hopped in his Batmobile to chase after the Joker. That would make for a great cliffhanger if we ever decided to continue our story. So now we have a beginning, an ending, and a very, very tense middle. This means we're ready to move on to step six, outline the plot points. I've gone ahead and listed the plot points into an outline, which you can see here. I'll just quickly read them. Batman and Robin are held captive by the Joker and his accomplices. Joker demands to know what's happened to his explosives. Batman admits Commissioner Gordon has it, and it's on its way to an undisclosed police warehouse. Joker demands that Batman talk to Gordon on the phone and convince him to bring the explosives back. On the phone with Gordon, Batman does the opposite, thus angering the Joker. The angry Joker orders Harley Quinn to chop off Robin's head. Just before the axe head comes down, Joker stops Harley because he remembers that Batman probably knows the exact address of the undisclosed police warehouse. Batman and Robin both resist giving up the address. Joker hangs Robin by a rope around the neck. Batman gives up the address. Joker and accomplices exit the building but leave Robin hanging. Just in time, the Gotham SWAT team saves Robin. Lastly, Batman leaves to follow the Joker. So there you have it, a very basic plot outline. In the next video, I'll show you how to take this plot outline and convert it into a six page comic book script. Before we move on, if you have any questions or feedback, then feel free to put them in the comment section below. If you found this video helpful and you'd like for me to keep making more, then the easiest way to convey that to me is by hitting like, subscribe, and the bell icon for notifications. If you want a free PDF copy of today's class notes, then simply sign up for my newsletter and I'll send it to you. The link is in the description below. Last but not least, if you'd like to buy this Batman book here, then you can do so at Heroes Comic Book Shop in Burlington, New Jersey. Tell Daryl that Angelo sent you. But for those who live elsewhere, I've put the Amazon.com link in the description below. Also, if you want to buy this shirt I'm wearing, then you can also find the link in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. You won't want to miss this.